got some past exam questions here for the year 13 equilibrium topic. So if you want to have a go at these, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So click on that and then do the questions and then play on for the answers. Okay, so question one, which change would result in an increased equilibrium yield of chloroethene? So obviously we want the equilibrium to go to the right hand side. So increasing the pressure, that wouldn't do it because it would move backwards. There's fewer moles on the left hand side. Increasing the surface area of a catalyst, that wouldn't have any effect on the position. Catalysts don't affect position of equilibrium, so D is wrong as well. C, increasing the temperature, well, yeah, that would work because the forward reaction is endothermic. So an increase in temperature favours the endothermic direction, which is forwards. Question two, there's a couple of things we've got a process to get to the answer. So at room temperature and pressure, the equilibrium lies well to the right hand side. That means it's got a large Kc. So B and D have the large Kc values, so it's going to be one of those. We now need to establish the units of Kc. So we'd have concentration cubed on the top and to the power 4 on the bottom. So when you cancel the units down, you get 1 over moles per decimeter cubed. And then taking that up to the top, you get dm to the 3 mol to the minus 1. So D has got the right units. Question 3 We've got this uh, equilibrium system. We've got a positive delta rate to so the forward reaction is endothermic. We're told that the equilibrium system is compressed, so the pressure is increased, but it's kept at constant temperature. So if we think about the effect of pressure first, so if you increase the pressure, you're going to move the equilibrium to the side with the fewest moles. So this one's going to go to the right. In other words, the moles of methanol is going to increase. So A and D would be okay for that. The temperature is kept constant. That means Kc stays the same. So C and D are okay for Kc. So therefore D must be the answer. Question four, we've got the Harbour process equilibrium. So just looking at that, we've got a negative delta H. So the forward reaction is exothermic. And we're asked what effect will increasing the temperature have on the composition of the equilibrium mixture so in other words, the concentrations of the substances and what would be the value on the equilibrium constant. So because the forward reaction is exothermic, this equilibrium will go backwards. It will favour the um, endothermic reaction. So it's going to shift backwards. And so therefore the composition will, well, it will decrease. The amount of ammonia is going to decrease and the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen will increase. So their concentrations will do that. The value of Kc, therefore, will decrease. Question moves into a Kp calculation. So we're told the initial moles of nitrogen and hydrogen and that at equilibrium, the mixture contains that many moles of nitrogen. And we've got that total pressure there. Calculate Kp, show all your work and include your units. So I do this ICE method. So initial moles, change in moles, equilibrium moles. So the first thing I would write is the initial moles of nitrogen and hydrogen. We'll give them there. Obviously, there's no ammonia at the very start. And then I'm going to move straight to this. At equilibrium, the mixture contains 0.4 moles of nitrogen. So you can see that there's been a decrease in the moles of nitrogen by the difference between those numbers, so 0 0.05. So once we've got that change in, we can apply the mole ratio. So there's a 1 to 3 ratio here. So um, three times that moles of hydrogen is going to react. So that means they would go to 0.3 at equilibrium. And the amount of moles of ammonia that will be formed would be two times that from the ratio. So it's going to go up by 0.1 and therefore you've got that many moles of ammonia formed. So the total moles at equilibrium is 0 0.8. Mole fractions now. So it's the moles at equilibrium divided by the total moles. So you get those numbers there. And then I always say to my students, check they add up to one. So it's a little check you can do in the middle of your calculation to check you're on the right line. So they should add up to one, which they do. The partial pressures now, just a little reminder that these are all in kilopascals because the total pressure is. So it's mole fraction times total pressure. So 0 0.5 times 500 gets you 250. 187.5 for the hydrogen, 62.5 for the ammonia. 
And another check you can do is the partial pressures obviously have to add up to the total pressure of 500 and these do as well. So then we write the Kp expression. So you can see there, partial pressure of the ammonia squared divided by the partial pressure of nitrogen times the partial pressure of hydrogen cubed. Put your numbers in, these numbers here, and out pops the answer, 2.37 from centre minus six, and the units, so you've got effectively kilopascals squared on the top, and kilopascals to the power of four, because it's that, kilopascals times cubed kilopascals, so four on the bottom, and they cancel down to um, one over kilopascals squared, so it's kp at the minus two. Okay, so moving on to question five, got the same uh, equilibrium, the harbour process. This time it's a KC calculation. So we've got the initial moles of nitrogen and hydrogen, and we're told the volume of the equilibrium mixture is 5 dm cubed, and at equilibrium 0.36 moles of ammonia is formed. So same as before, initial change equilibrium, but with a KC calculation you work out the equilibrium concentration, and that's obviously moles divided by that volume of 5 dm cubed. So there's your initial moles, and then I'm going to jump to that there. There's your 0.36 moles of ammonia that's formed. So that's telling us that um, there's an increase in moles of 0.36. Once we know that, we can apply the mole ratios like we did before. So to form 0.36 moles of ammonia, half as many moles of nitrogen have to react from the ratio. So that gets you, um, there'll be 0.62 left, not minus that. Um, the hydrogen, you can work out a couple of ways. Once you know this, you could say, well, three times as many moles of hydrogen is going to need to react. Get you the 0.54, and then difference is what's left. Or you could think about it as, well, to form 0.36 moles of ammonia, three over two, three over two moles of hydrogen have to react. Either way, you get 0.54 there. So then the equilibrium concentrations these moles divided by the five, to get you those. And then write your KC expression. Remember it's square brackets for um, KC calculations. Put your numbers in, and there's your answer. And units, you've got concentration squared on the top and concentration effectively to the power four, because it's the power one times power three. So that leaves you one over moles per decimeter cubed squared Take everything to the top, dm the 6 mol to the minus 2. Okay, so our last page is just some wordy type of questions. So again, we're still with this harbour process equilibrium. Um, the chemist predicts that the addition of nitrogen will increase the proportion of hydrogen that reacts. Explain whether this prediction is correct. It's all based around the KC expression and the fact that the temperature is kept at 300 so Kc won't change or can't change if the temperature is kept constant. Okay, so if you think about it, adding nitrogen, so there's your nitrogen in the Kc expression, adding nitrogen will increase the denominator term. That will therefore decrease the Kc value. Okay, so increasing the denominator from that increase in nitrogen will decrease Kc. So the equilibrium shifts to restore Kc back to its original value because the temperature hasn't changed. So to restore Kc, in other words, to increase it back up to its value, the numerator has to increase. Obviously, the denominator needs to decrease accordingly. So how does the equilibrium achieve that? It shifts to the right. So if the equilibrium is shifting to the right, obviously more hydrogen is going to react. So the prediction was correct. Next part of the question suggests why the chemist is more concerned with increasing the proportion of hydrogen that reacts rather than the proportion of nitrogen. It's all to do with the availability of those two gases. So nitrogen is readily available from air. Remember air is sort of four-fifths nitrogen. Hydrogen has to be manufactured. And the final question is about this homogeneous equilibrium system here between this ester, water, alcohol and carboxylic acid. So we'll jump straight to here. The students' values for Kc were different. Which reason or reasons below could explain why the Kc values are different? Right, so the first thing I would be thinking is, right, temperature is the only thing that alters Kc. 
So let's look at our options. Option one, each student carried out their experiment at a different temperature. Yes, that will change KC. Two, each student used different concentrations of sodium hydroxide in their titration. No, that won't change KC because only temperature does. Three, each student titrates a different volume of the equilibrium mixture. No, that won't change KC either. It's only temperature that alters KC. So only one was correct. D was the answer.